Welcome to You Code Things, where you learn to code things. Today, in episode one of the Learning Rust series, we're tackling the fundamentals. You'll start by printing stuff to the screen, we'll explore some simple data types, variables, and simple functions. Haven't installed or set up Rust? Check out the last video first, or just use the Rust Playground. Open your terminal, type cargo new lesson one. This will be an application, so add the bin flag for binary. Change into that directory using cd and run it with cargo run. Let's explore this print line macro in the main function. Hello world is a string literal because it's surrounded by double quotes. Strings can also be multi-line, we can also print a char or character, just use a single quote. This is a bool or boolean, it can be true or false. You can print all the integer types, there are a couple different representations. You can also print all the float types, there are two representations. You can also space your numbers out with underscores. Neat. This is more interesting. We're using format syntax. Nine in decimal, now binary, now in octal, now pattern with zeros. This format syntax allows us to control how things are displayed. You'll also use the debug formatting to print more complicated data structures like this list. Don't worry about that syntax. I don't intend to use more formatting than what I've shown. However, you might. So if you need a reference to remember all those options, this is how I found it. Rust up doc for those sweet, sweet offline docs. Search print line and click the drop down. Standard font for more info? Lots of stuff. Numeric operations are pretty useful. Plus, minus, multiplication, and division. This is integer division, and this is float division. Integer division is like float division, but no decimals. Need a remainder? Use the modular operator or percent sign. Oh yeah, I bet you're interested in those integer types from before. It's easy. If it starts with an I, it can be negative. If it starts with a U, it can't be negative. The number after is how many binary digits are allocated in memory for that number. Even though these look the same when positive, the i32 has 32 binary digits available for use, while the i8 has only eight binary digits. We can't see them because the zeros are trimmed from the front. Make them negative, shows us the two's complement representation in binary. Ah, now you can see how much more space that i32 takes over the i8. Need negatives? Use the ones that start with i. Don't need negatives? Use the u ones. Smaller max numbers can be contained in smaller boxes. Bigger numbers in bigger boxes. OMG, just use the chart. Variables are pretty fun. Use the keyword let to make new ones. A is equal to 1. Now let's add 1 to it and reassign it. Just for fun, let's get the compiler to check our work using cargo check. Oh my god. Rust is reminding us that everything is immutable by default. Immutability means it doesn't change. If you want stuff to change, you must explicitly add a little mute marker. This protects you from a pretty severe bug. I'll show you through this other language. I've anonymized it so nobody gets hurt. You've got this blob of server data, and of course your server is full of asynchronous events. Now I'll use this data. I love coding like this. A is mutable and we can increment it. You cannot change the type. This A variable will never be another type. Functions let you reuse computation. They're like a recipe. They have a name, take in arguments and do stuff. This one shouts while it adds integers. It returns an integer. You can write this function so that it works for all summable numbers, but that's for another time. You may have noticed the lack of compound data types, things like lists or trees, bundles of data. That requires Rust's flagship feature, ownership. And that's next time. Tell me in the comments below, what's tripping you up in Rust? Subscribe, like, and of course, this episode was sponsored.